Well, hello there, everyone. How y'all doing this magical Monday? Or is it Ma uh, Manic Monday? I think the bank will sing a song about Manic Monday. <laughs> yeah, it's August the 21st here, 2023. Yeah, August is moving on like every single month moves on. Yeah, so what gear is your portfolio in? What gear is your life in? Yeah, do you know what I'm talking about? It's in regards to like a manual speed car, you know, shifter. You ever drive one? I have. Let's see, I've owned them before a couple different times, like four speeds, five speeds, or a motorcycle with clutch. You know, that's the same thing as manual. You gotta use your hand, hand for the clutch, left hand clutch, right hand front brake, your left foot down there, shift gears, and the uh, brake pedal for the rear brake is on the right side, I guess it was. <laughs> it's been a while since I've driven a motorcycle. So anyway, with that being said, I'm Maskey Finance. I'm not a financial advisor, not a CPA, not an attorney. I'm not a doctor, not a nutritionist, just in case I talk about anything health related. All right, so what gear is your portfolio in? What am I talking about? Well, first of all, I watched a video earlier today by uh, Troy Eckerd. Troy Eckerd is the CEO and founder of Eckerd uh, Land and Acquisition. He's the gentleman I buy mineral rights acreage from. I've had, I have videos about mineral rights acreage, okay? And he was comparing mineral rights returns to a five-speed car, okay? And he just gave me the idea of this video. Your portfolio, what do you invest in? Let me know below what you invest in, okay? Do you invest in stocks, crypto, real estate, uh, oil, mineral rights, art, wine, commodities, salt, anything, whatever. What do you invest in? Do you just put the money in the bank, high yield savings account? Um, what do you invest in? So what gear is your portfolio in? If your money's just in the bank, you're staying down there in first gear, I dare say. All right, if your money's in the stock market, depends on if you are a stock picker or not. If you're in an S&P 500 fund, I think at times you go reverse. Sometimes you go first gear. You go reverse, you go first gear. Occasionally, you might have a year where you go second or third gear, okay? But then you might go reverse again, okay? If you have a real estate portfolio and you build it up, you might start off a little bit first gear because when you buy it, you spend money to buy it, you spend money to rehab it, so you're in first gear. But as time goes on, you start shifting. You're pushing that clutch in, you're going to second gear, you're going to third gear. Because if you ran your numbers correctly, <clears throat> your um, positive cash flow will pick up over time because you will have rent increases, you will pay your mortgages down. If you get Four houses, you get five houses, you get 10 houses. You'll notice like, like I'm gonna pay some mortgages today, this afternoon. I paid some already. I paid my mortgages early. I never did that when I had my first house. Um, but I do that now with my rental property and this house here. I, I always pay them early, just how I do things. All right, I love paying them. Why? Because every month I pay it, I'm paying just a little bit more towards the principal than I did the month before. I keep a spreadsheet. So when I look at it, I'll see like my debt for all my mortgages was this number last month, and now it's this number. It drops down several thousand dollars every single month, and it just the amount it drops increases just a little bit every month compared to the month before. Okay, so my rents go up over time. Of course, my tax and insurance might go up over time too, but over time, my real estate portfolio goes to a higher gear. I've seen that both with my oil drilling and my mineral rights. Neither of them have ever gone into reverse. They've been in neutral sometimes in the beginning because you're not getting any revenue, but you're not losing any money. So you're in neutral. And they've been first, they've been second, they've hit fifth gear, they've come back down to fourth or third, and so on and so on. What about your life? How's everything going with you? That's a genuine question. I care about people. How's everything going with you? Do you live in an area in Southern California where you just flooded? I'm sorry to hear that if that's the case. Um, have you been hit by a hurricane? That's Southern California was a um, tropical storm, I believe, not a hurricane. It had diminished in strength. Okay. Um, do you live in Vermont where you flooded the other month? Do you live somewhere in Virginia or Maryland where they had bad storms and they flooded some just the other couple weeks ago? How's it going? Do you have a partner? Do you have kids? How's everything going? I saw a story today, two police officers here in this area. They have a two-year-old child who has leukemia. It's just diagnosed with, with leukemia. It's a blood disorder. The article I read also said a couple things that concerned me. It said this little child loves ice cream. 
This kid's two years old. What are they doing eating ice cream at that young of an age? And they, the kid, child was in the hospital, had some sort of treatment or something, and the article said they were given their favorite kind of ice cream after the treatment. Again, that ice cream, sugar. Sugar is causes inflammation in your body. Okay, it's a downside eating sugar. Yes, sugar tastes good. You give sugar to an animal. Animals like sugar because it's sweet. People, humans, mammals, we all like sugar. Okay, but it's inflammatory. It causes inflammation in our bodies. So I'm not saying give up on sugar. I'm not saying that. I'm saying to make wise decisions. I'm saying to reduce the amount you consume. Maybe you do eliminate it or just like reduce it. It's a, it's a personal choice. Okay. Same for salt. Salt's not like sugar, but salt's not good for you. It causes issues. Can you reduce it? Same for even worse, I think, than sugar and salt is what they call ultra processed foods. Processed meats, bacon, lunch meat, salami, all that kind of stuff. Bologna, that's processed meats. The boxes of foods that you buy, like Hamburger Helper. I'm just throwing names out, okay? I'm not calling out any specific company. Um, something like Hamburger Helper, the spinoff companies that do it. Um, boxes of cereal, chemicals, um, and other ingredients you can't read. And a variety, frozen foods. Not frozen veggies and fruits, but frozen foods. What is in there? That ultra, that stuff. Glyphosate is in so many fruits and vegetables. What's glyphosate? It's a chemical. It's in Roundup. Roundup has been designed in GMO plants. You've heard of GMO, right? Genetically modified organisms or whatever it stands for. They've been, mod they've been genetically modified where Roundup can be sprayed on them. and It'll kill the weeds, but do not hurt, does not hurt that fruit or that vegetable. Yet, we as people, we are consuming that product if we don't buy organic. Look at the dirty dozen online. Strawberries are usually ranked number one for being the dirtiest because they, they're soft. They absorb the chemicals, the herbicides and pesticides that are sprayed on them. Okay? I understand organic costs more than non-organic. Okay? I heard something in a video last night. I'm watching a series of videos about our microbiome. Okay? It's fascinating because we all have bacteria all throughout our bodies. On our skin, in our mouth, in our nose, in our gut, in our stomach, in our throats, on our hands. There's, we have microbiome bacteria everywhere, okay? Something I've heard though, if you can't afford organic, is if you're buying, especially like leafy greens, you're buying salads that um, it's not organic, that, you know, those leaves, what's on those leaves? You're buying other vegetables. If you're buying an avocado, a mango, or something where you peel it, it's not a big deal because, you know, it's, you're eating the inside, not the outside. But if you're eating the skin, the outer surface, and it's, non-organic. Something I just saw in the video last night is pretty simple and it says it can remove up to 80% of the chemicals that are on that plant. I don't know how accurate that is, but if it removes a percentage, that's good. And they said take one tablespoon of baking soda, put it to one gallon of water. Uh, let your pr produce, whatever it is, fruit or veggies, soak in that, like a big bowl, let it soak in that for about 10 minutes. Then rinse it very well. You don't want to be, I mean, baking soda is not going to hurt you, but you know, you got the chemicals in there. So you rinse it very well. And then if it's true what the video said, you now have reduced the amount of chemicals in it. And I will say this, I've heard this from a variety of different people. If your choice is to eat ultra processed foods or non-organic produce, choose the non-organic produce. Because even if it has the chemicals, it's, you're eating some natural stuff in there. It's better than the ultra-processed foods, the fake foods, the stuff that tastes oh so delicious, the candy bars that you might buy, the potato chips you might buy, this, all that kind of stuff that tastes so good because they put chemicals in there that li we like as human beings, all right? So they taste so good. Those are bad for you. Energy drinks. How many of you all drink Monsters or Rockstar or something like that? <sighs> That's worse than a can of soda. And a can of soda is terrible with all that sugar. But the Rockstars and the Monsters and the various energy drinks, what is in those drinks? What are you putting in your bodies? So when you hear about children two years old getting some weird disease, when you hear about somebody 27 years old getting colon cancer, 
or somebody getting this or somebody getting a weird disease at a young age. Let's think about why is that happening. And then to go back to investing, I see an article on CNBC from yesterday or the day before. Average 401k balances for Americans for age 50 and up or 55 to 65, 50 to 59, whatever that age was for, I think it's 50 to 59 was the age group. And it was like the average balance was like, oh, I might get the number wrong, 170 some thousand, $200,000 in their 401k. That's not a lot of money, especially when you're that old. Okay, you're gonna retire on say $200,000. But what did I just say? The average, the medium, 50%, 50% higher, 50% lower. The medium was something like 27,000. <clears> so 50% of those people had something like $27,000 or less. That's downright scary. Didn't I make a video yesterday about the storm and social security? I forgot to mention one thing in there. For, to fix Social Security, they could increase taxes on everybody that pays it. They could um, increase the retirement age to receive it. And the other thing they could do, this is what I really think, that I should have, I forgot about yet to mention yesterday. I really think they're going to do this before they do the other two. They might do the other two, but I really think they'll do this one. Right now, the level of income, where there's a certain level of income, when you pass that level of income, they no longer hold Social Security tax out. And it's something like, I'll get this wrong, 115000 120000 110000 somewhere in there for a couple, I think. So maybe, don't hold me to that. I'm not an accountant. Um, so as you make a higher income, you're not paying Social Security tax on it. What I really think they'll do is have it where if you're making $400,000, you're going to pay Social Security tax on the entire $400,000. Maybe not all the way up that high, but I think they're going to increase that. They'll tweak the retirement age and the um, retirement age. Well, the third one. <laughs> I think they'll do a combination of all three, or at least two out of the three. Okay, but Social Security won't be like it is now. Just like right now, it's not like it was 25 years ago. Just like pensions now aren't like they were 25 years ago. Okay, so again, what gear is your portfolio in? What gear is your life in? What gear is your health in? There is no reason. I made a video something about us uh, a month, two, or three ago about we could live to be 125. It has not that many views in it. Okay? I'm dead serious there. If you're younger than me, there is no reason, the majority of you, not all of you, I'm not saying you individually, but the majority of folks younger than me, when I say younger, at least 10 years younger or younger, you guys should plan to live to be 125. Because if you make the right decisions, you may, if you just follow the advice I'd say in my videos about what to eat and what to drink and how to live your life, you're going to live longer. And if you have, follow my advice, stories I share about investing, you're going to live longer and work less because you have a portfolio to support you. So figure out how to put your life, your health, and your investments in to at a minimum first gear or second gear okay do not keep it in reverse or neutral you got to keep moving forward just in life in general you got to keep moving forward life is about change it's everything permanent in life is change all right so that being said progress is being made on my decision for this house i'll share that with you sometime later this week all right have a great day maskey is signing out